In last week's episode, we took you along as we made a split decision during our offshore passage to head north to an impressive set of islands located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. We can't begin to explain how excited we are to take you along as we sail the Madeira Islands in our floating home. We have to say, it's pretty special to visit a magical far-off place like this while getting to sleep in our own bed as each day comes to an end. After four days and 580 nautical miles, we make landfall in Porto Santo, the most north and eastern island in the Portuguese archipelago. Our first stop is into the Port Authority and getting ourselves all checked in with the Harbor Office and the Customs Officers on site. The islands have mild to warm winters and warm to hot summers. 5,500 people call this island home, where the main settlement is in Villa Bellera, also known as Porto Santo. When we made landfall here, I kind of got the same feeling I did when we made landfall in Horta in the Azores, because I mean, I don't know, Portuguese islands, islands in the middle of the ocean. I know that it wasn't like a big Atlantic crossing, it wasn't 19 days, it was only four days, but still kind of get that feel. And they have the murals all along the wall here in the port, just like in Horta, where sailors will leave their artwork, um, you know, leaving behind a little piece of them that they've made landfall here. And we definitely got to do that again. So we're just trying to suss out a spot. It's pretty smooth right here. Yeah. We're not making it big. <laughs> no, I don't even think that we have enough paint. We have leftover paint from Horta, which I don't think we have very much of. I don't know if there is a hardware store here that we can find exactly what we're looking for without having to get paint that um, took forever to dry, like last time in Horta. Remember our whole paint fluffle? It took us like oh, hours and hours. Forever. We got like the <laughs> slowest quick dry paint in all the land. A simple little stencil took us, what, like six hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, hopefully still have our stencil from last time. Travis is looking all the way down there, but I kind of want it to be right when you get off the dinghy dock there. And then it's right in your face. <laughs> Where? I don't know about there. It's the smoothest. Yeah, but I don't think, I think it's a wall thing. That one's a good spot there. Like, look how fresh this one is. It's so glossy. Maybe they got the paint here or they brought it. We're not that prepared. Well, we didn't know. So actually we didn't even know we were coming here. Yeah. Yeah. But we're never prepared anyway. So. Well, uh, apparently a lot of the islands in the Atlantic, you can paint something on a wall. It's kind of cool. We didn't really know that, but... After the Azores, I feel like we should have known. But that's pretty yeah. cool, because it's like, you made it here by boat, you're in the middle of the ocean, you got to leave your mark. The rougher it is, the less detail you're going to get in it. Okay, it's not going to be perfect. We're just slapping something on here. Red, white, gypsy. Mm -hmm. How big does it have to be? Yeah, it turned out pretty good. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> lost, was... lost the, the proness out of it. No, it's whatever. not centered and it's bleeding. Whatever. It's impossible. <laughs> well, that gives that us some so room odd. to write gypsy here. Anyways, <laughs> whatever. Could hit it with white and try it again. No, forget it. No one's examining it. I know, but you know how we are. You know how we are. <laughs> Not today. Well, too bad. Because then it brings less attention. Yeah, 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 okay. I think that looks pretty good. We fixed it. Cleaned it up a little bit. Okay, we have to do the passing by test now. If we pass by, does it catch our eye? It's not, it's not shouting at me yet. It's also one of the smaller ones, so oh. it really has to do a good job. Works for me. You see it? You see it? See it, folks? See it? Small but mighty. You can't see it. It's right there. Now we're going to grab a little drink at this funky looking... Cafe, bar. Wait, we're gonna pay first. Yeah. Doesn't 
still look pretty wild though. Bedrock from the Flintstones. After two days in this protected little harbor, anchors up as we head to another island. degrees. Geez, that's overpowering, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, as soon as that came up. How cool is that? <laughs> oh cool. Look No idea for flying it right. There's no way I would want to fly this to the other side. <laughs> you know what I mean? What if the wind pipes have to deal with that? This is super cool. So friggin' awesome. So that's what it looks like. We had no idea. We knew it was a little bit of yellow, red, and white. Blue. Yeah, but those are just the markers. Like the red and the blue were the markers of the tack and the clube. So it's yellow and white, which is super cool because spinnakers are supposed to be, you know, loud and bright. So yeah. pumped. We would never sail in this. What are the winds right now? Like six. Yeah. We're doing 4.4 knots. But that was kind of aggressive. Like when it first came out, we were like, ah! So then we had to turn down wind right away. And I think it shifted us like 20 degrees and then we kind of got into it. And it's fabulous. Yeah. I still got to tweak a few things on how I have it set up. Like I'm, I have no idea really how to run the sheets and the and the tack line and everything. Now I have a little bit better of an idea. So cool. It just fills up so nicely. It's so awesome that we're sailing right now and like no wind. It could this will change the dynamic of how we can sail. Yeah. And it's nice because today is very, very light. It's actually a lot lighter than it was called for. So we thought we were gonna have to motor. Um a little bit of swell, but this is this is perfect. Gliding along. Okay, we're ready to douse it. Hopefully this goes smoothly. Okay. okay. Hold on, I gotta take a ravel off.
Imagine we had no sock. Without a sock? <laughs> oh my god, I feel like yanking it down. <laughs> Stressing out. Stressing if the wind picked up. After an exciting 30 nautical mile sail, we arrive in Madeira Island. Madeira Island is the top of a massive submerged shield volcano that rises about 6 kilometers or 3.7 miles from the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. Our anchorage for the night is the far east tip in the area of Ponta de São Lourenço. It's the easternmost point of Madeira Island. Near the town of Canisal, we've dropped the hook, surrounding ourselves in serene and rugged landscapes, really getting the sense that we've sailed to a whole new world out here. The night was quite rolly, so we're off again. 253,000 call Madeira Island home, of which 112,000 reside in the capital of Funchal. As we make our way over to Funchal, on the south part of the island, we're passing the airport on our starboard side. Check out underneath, that's actually a boatyard down there under the tarmac. As we approach the port, we could anchor out here, but the swell makes it undesirable, as does the forecast for the next few days. So our safest bet is to grab a slip at the small and rather tight marina for our time here. Like Porto Santo, sailors also leave their mark along the harbour break wall. If you find yourself in Funchal, be on the lookout for Gypsy. We love it when you guys send us photos when you come across our artwork in your own travels. The beautiful greenery. Portugal really does a great job with all their gardens in the center of town. Of course, there's a big market with colorful, fresh produce and seafood. So far, Funchal reflects what we've noticed to be consistent in most of the Portuguese towns, cities, and islands we've sailed to. Quaint, with detailed cobblestone work, polished and very clean. Patio restaurants line the narrow streets, and wandering after sunset is an experience of its own. Too bad they haven't turned on the Christmas lights yet. We can see them strung everywhere and can only imagine how magical it looks here during the holidays. We've only just scratched the surface of this new favorite place of ours. The best of Madeira is yet to come. We hop in a car with two other fellow Canadians and a German and explore some of the most epic sights and landscapes on the island. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel because that's what's coming up in our next episode and we promise you do not want to miss it. Thanks for watching.